So guys, we're going to be looking at Galatians chapter 5 again. But this time, I'm not even really giving no recap and all that stuff. We're going to just go straight in um, at verse 18. All of you know what, what we've been talking about. When it says walk in the Spirit, it says walk in the Spirit so you don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. The whole time with this series pretty much is that we've been trying to just to truly identify, man, that there's a struggle going on. That's a battle that goes on between the spirit and the flesh. And the, whichever one is the strongest, that's the one that's going to lead. So tonight, man, I, my, my, my goal or um, I guess the objective of the night as we just wrap everything up was just to constantly put in front of your face, man, the, the contrast between living according to the flesh and living by the spirit. And then not only that, man, then we apply some, some spiritual principles and stuff that we could uh, apply on a daily basis. Amen? So let's just pray one more time. Just I want to just make sure that, uh, that we get this prayer covered. Most high God, I, I thank you again, God. Daddy, we come before you, Lord God, simply to hear a word from you, not from a man, not from uh, anybody. God, we want to hear directly from your throne, O King. So, Daddy, right now, I pray, Lord God, that I will completely get out of your way. And Father God, I pray, Lord God, that you would bind out every distraction, Lord God, of any type, Lord God, if it's in our minds, God, that you would block it out, God, that you would build a wall of fire around each individual person tonight, that God, as we wrap this series up, Lord God, that they would be able to connect with your word, Lord God, and that they would become better for it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. So guys. As again, as we've been talking about, man, just that, that battle that goes on between the flesh and the spirit. I want to start off tonight. Um, I want this to be a, a really a interactive uh, type thing. This is a Bible study, right? I know so, so many times we used to come into church and we sit there and we just, mm -hmm. praise God, hallelujah. You know, we, we, we dozing off and I'm telling you, everybody that's falling asleep tonight, I will come touch you on your shoulder and just, you know, I just want to make sure you're all right. We're not doing mouth to mouth. We do foot to chest over here. So if you are, no, let me stop that. So this is the thing. I want to, you know, I want you to talk back to me. I'm going to talk to you. We're going to have some dialogue, all right? So again, we've been talking about what? The contrast between uh, the spirit and the flesh. I know y'all remember a few weeks, uh, well, the, one of the times I was up here, I had TP and Brother John was up here. Brother John was representing the flesh. TP was representing the spirit. And we kind of just showed that there's always a battle of pulling, of, of going on, you know, on either side. So my question to you tonight, I want you to think back maybe yesterday, last couple of days, maybe the last couple of weeks. Have you been feeling a pull in two directions when it's time to make decisions? Come on, all right? Have you had that feeling where you got one side, you know, urging you to do what feels good, but you know it ain't quite right, right? And then you got the other side that's urging and pulling you to do what you know is good. Our life is filled with a bunch of different uh, decisions that we got to make. And we have to make sure that we move, you, you know, we're, when we're making decisions, man, we can't always just go according to our feelings, right? A lot of times, man, you know, I, I felt this way, so I went this direction. But, man, we need to make sure that our feelings are lining up with the Holy Spirit and making sure that the Spirit is the one that's leading. Amen? Amen. I want you to know this here. There's definitely a conflict between the flesh, the sinful nature, and the Spirit. So my question to you going to be tonight is who is winning? As we go through this thing, I want you to picture, man, the spirit and the flesh, they up there in the stands and they, they holding the scoreboard. Every decision you have to make, either the spirit going to get a point or the flesh going to get a point. And I don't want it to be whether the, the, the flesh be looking at the spirit, man, I got you on that one. I knew I was going to get him on that one. So we just going to go through it, man, and we're going to just break the thing down word for word, and we're going to go in it, all right? So let's go ahead and get to the scripture. Uh, verse, starting at verse 18, Galatians chapter 5, verses 18. And like I said, we're going to really try to get all the way through it. The Bible says, but if you be led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulence, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, Indian murder, murders, drunkenness, reveling, and such like, of which I tell you, before, as I also have told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, 
joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another, envying one another. All right, so that seems like a lot of stuff, but I got faith that we can get through it tonight. All right, so we're going to start at the top, and we're going to break down each verse. We're going to go verse by verse, break that thing down, and this is where you guys come in, because this is the thing. I want you to be able to, if you see something, or maybe you don't understand something, I don't want it to be where you, where you come to church, you sit down, you leave, and I'm like, man, I, I didn't really get it. We don't want that to happen tonight. If you got a question, man, raise your hand. We're going to acknowledge it. Again, I just want some interaction. So we're looking at verse uh, 18, and we're going to just start from there. The Bible says this, here, but if you're led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. Two things are going on. Can anybody identify what those two things are? All right. I'm sorry, go ahead. Okay, being under the law. All right, so being led by the Spirit or being under the law, what is the difference? Can anybody tell me? And why, after he said, man, you, 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 you know, you, if you walk after the Spirit, you won't feel the lust of the flesh, why would this even come up? Anybody? I'm sorry, say it again. The law is not enforced today. The law is not enforced today. Okay, that, that, that's an idea. All right. Anybody else? I'm sorry? Still in bondage. Okay, all right. That, that's, that's also a good one. When it talks about the, 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 you know, if you're being led by the Spirit, you're not under the law, what that really represents is some freedom that there. Like when she said bondage, there's freedom when you're being led by the Spirit. But if you understand what was going on in, in, in Galatia, man, Paul had went there. He had to set some things straight, right? Man, a lot of the brothers had didn't come to, 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 to the knowledge of God. They have understood what Christ did and the work that he'd done. And, man, they're saved. They have put their trust in God. And, they, man, they're living their lives, and they're free to live their life, Amen. right? But what happened was these Judah, the Bible says they call them Judaizers. So there were some Hebrews that came up in there, man, and they looked at the freedom that they had, and me like, man, uh-uh. Man, I, you know, they, they got to whispering, man, you know, yeah, y'all saved, it's good. You know, it's, you know, being saved is good, it's awesome. But, and they had to try to add something else to it. The thing is this here, that butt will get your butt in trouble. I mean, that will get you in trouble. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Amen? The butt, you don't need anything else. You don't have to add anything else to it. When you put your trust in God, don't you let somebody else come there and say, hey, man, you need to do something else. Oh, you need to do this, or you need to do that. One of the greatest things that they were talking about when they were saying under the law, they were telling some of the Gentile brothers, right, that, hey, man, uh, I know you're 47 years old, you know, but you put your trust in God. But the thing is, you need to be circumcised at 47. Not at eight days like, the, you know, the law said, you know, it's, it's a difference, you know what I'm saying, at this age and this time where you know what pain is. You could, but they're telling them, hey, man, not only do you need to uh, get circumcised, but, man, you got to make sure you follow the law. And some of the brothers were falling for that. And the thing is, when you, when you look at the law and you look at the spirit, again, spirit brings liberty. Spirits bring freedom. But when you're following the law, what you're doing, somebody told you, don't do this, don't do that. So you're just going to do it and not do it to try to always get it right. But what's going to happen? It's going to be a time when you fall short. All right? There's going to be a time that you're going to be like, man, I just don't want to listen today. I don't care what he said. I'm just not doing it today. Your mom or your, your parents ever told you, man, don't touch that hot stove. And boy, for some reason, that fire be calling you. Phil, Phil. I'm like, don't, how you know my name? The fire is calling. The thing he tell you, man, don't stick that fork in that electrical socket. Why is it that you, the little children, so much want to stick that metal inside of that electrical socket? That's the same way we are here. Yeah. When you're following the law, that means you're trying to, to do something to gain justification. All right? You're trying to do something on the outside to tell God, hey, God, look, I hope you're pleased with me. I did everything I could do. Right? But when it comes to being led by the Spirit, it's a whole different thing. 
you don't do stuff because you, you don't want to get caught or you don't, uh, you know, you're just doing it. Man, when you're led by the Spirit, man, you're so much in love with God. You're so much in relationship with him that he, and he says, man, look, I don't, 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 don't you, I don't want you to lie. Man, no problem, God. I don't want to lie because I don't want to offend you. He said, thou shalt not commit adultery. Man, that ain't no big deal. I'm in love with you. I want to please you. So no, I'm not going to be uh, going out and committing adultery. I'm not going to steal. Why? Because I know that's going to offend my God. I always say this all the time. When you have a bunch of rules and no relationship, guess what? It always ends in rebellion. So Paul goes to Galatia and he begins to teach them and tell them, look, man, y'all ain't got to do none of this stuff. Never, ever, ever was by the works of the law was any man justified. Let me get my computer back on. All right? So let's see where we at. So we're talking about what's the difference. When I look at this, this first point, when I look at the verse itself, all I can see is that being led by the Spirit is about living in freedom, not bound by legalistic rules, but empowered by God's presence to live righteously. When you truly had a heart change, nobody ain't got to tell you, man, hey, get up and read your Bible. When you truly have, have, have tasted of God and his goodness, well, it ain't got to be like, man, I, I really don't feel like praying today. You know, I, I'm going to just be mean for no reason. Not, because something happens on the inside when you make that connection with God. When you trust in him, you understand who you are and who he is, and the next thing you know, you begin to operate a whole lot different. The law exposes sin but it doesn't give power to overcome it. So all them boys was just saying, man, look, you need to follow the law. You need to follow the law. And I remember at one time, man, we used to be over here, some of the, you know, the brothers from the different camps, they would come, especially when they found out that we had the Hebrew doctrine, man, they would, boy, they would come like, you know, it'd be four or five up, man, and they would be, you know, they'd be coming. So I kind of used to mess with them on purpose. Uh, you know, and I know one thing about, about them, they always came at us with two things. Y'all not following the law. What part are we not following? I say, I'm not lying. I'm not committing adultery. I'm not stealing. You know, I, I honor my father and my mother. What, what part? Oh, I mean, y'all not worshiping on the Sabbath. I say, okay, so when is the Sabbath? Well, it's, I, say, I say, hold up now. Biblically, when is the Sabbath? After we broke that down, they couldn't. Well, y'all not following the dietary laws. I say, let me tell you something. I say, I love a good barbecue pork steak sandwich sometimes. And guess what? <laughs> I'm still blessed. I have life experience to show where my God moved on my behalf. What life experiences do you have following the law? Now, I'm going to tell you, I've been delivered. You know, I no longer, you know, indulge in that anymore. I know it don't look like it, but, uh, you know, I do stay away from certain things. And I feel that the law is not a bad thing, right? Because I want you to turn. Start with Romans chapter 7, all right? Romans chapter 7, verse 7. The law itself is not a bad thing. It's just, man, we got to get an understanding of why are we living the way we live and why are we calling ourselves followers of Christ? Why are we calling ourselves Christians just to do it? No, nah, man, this is who we are. God created us to worship him. God created us to bring him glory. So everything that we do all the time should bring him glory. Y'all heard that? Yes, all the time should bring him glory. The Bible says in Romans chapter 7, it says, what shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I would not have known sin but through the law. For I would not, know, I would not have known lust except the law said what? Thou shalt not covet. This is the thing. The Bible tells us what is sin. Sin is the transgression of the law. Again, when you're breaking God's law, you're in sin. But the thing is, when you are under grace and you've been justified by putting your trust in him and through faith, what happens? He comes in. The Holy Spirit comes in there, strengthens your spirit, man. And guess what? Now you're able to go on and live that thing out without breaking those laws. Yes, sir. I get some people, they tell me, man, yeah, y'all know my clap policy here at the church, don't one time, and let's keep on moving because the clock don't stop. Sometimes people tell me, they say, man, Phil, man, this, this walk can be so hard, this Christian walk. And I'm like, it doesn't really have to be that hard. When we put our trust in Jesus and the work that he's done on the cross, something changed inside of us, right? The Bible says that old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. How many of y'all watched the movie Coming to America back in the day? Y'all remember that movie Coming to America? Well, Eddie Murphy played this prince of Zamunda, right? 
So he came out here, he was looking for a wife, but his character had to play a person that he wasn't. Right? He had to get in these situations. Now, this was a prince. The, the family was filthy rich. He was the, the next to be in line on the throne. He was very, very rich, but he had to come there. And what ended up happening in the movie, he becomes a worker at McDonald's. Well, McDowell's, right? <laughs> this is, yes. And the thing was, he was pre pretending to be something that he wasn't. Right? He was the son of a king. But he is in McDonald's doing all kind of manual labor and all this stuff, and now he's finding himself in different situations where he got to lie because, you know, to, to cover up his identity, right? Other people see him as the prince, and now he's trying to cover that up because he don't want his true identity to show. And that made his life hard. But when his daddy found out what he was doing, his daddy had to come down and intervene. Brothers and sisters, this is the thing. When you have put your trust in Jesus... You're no longer a peasant. You're no longer at the bottom. God looks you, look at you as royalty, right? God looks at you as the sons and the daughters of a king. So this is the thing. Don't make him come down here to check you and say, hey, man, what are you doing? You're not being who you're supposed to be. I designed you for greatness. I designed you to, to be special in my eyes but you're trying to fit in with everybody else. That's what make our walk hard. Whenever we want to just always constantly stand on the edge all the time, everybody over here drinking and smoking, and you just want to do the same thing, that makes it hard. Why? Because your attention has been taken off of the Most High God and pleasing Him to looking at what the flesh is doing. They look like they're having a good time. Amen? All right? Let's keep on going. All right. Let's go to the next verse, verse 19 through 21. The Bible says this. Now, we're talking about the works of the flesh. 19 says, now the works of the flesh are manifested, which are these. Now, this is the thing. I got to say this here. Whenever you're reading your Bible and you're studying, is every word important? Hmm? How many of y'all, this list right here, I didn't read over the list before. But I just read through the verb, because that's all it sounded, a bunch of stuff. And I never really took time to look at this list, because he is warning us in the verse. He's saying, look, I need you to walk in the spirit and not fulfill the lust of your flesh. Now, we're going to read all the different things. Now, there's 17 works of the flesh. So it lets us know that, yes, we're going to get to the spirit <clears throat> in just a second. The spirit, you can bear fruit. But then the flesh also has some fruit also. So let's look at them. Verse 19 says, now these are the works of the flesh are manifested. Which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envying, murders, drunkenness, reveling, and such like of which I tell you before, as I've always told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Everybody got the list? Yes, sir. Let's talk about it. My question to you is, we're going to break down what each word means. All right, now I'm going to need your help. Some of y'all are very scholarly, and some of y'all, some of them, them sins, I mean, those things y'all are familiar with. You know, so, let me stop there. So let's go with it. First one on the list is adultery. Now, I want y'all to tell me what it is, but I want y'all to keep it as PG as possible. Amen. So what is, what is adultery? Anybody? All right? Having sexual relations outside of marriage. So that means God has already ordained for us, especially now, I want you to understand something. When we're looking at this list right here, this list is not, he's not preaching to the world. He's not. He's preaching to the believers that are in Galatia. All right? So why would Paul, a man of God, when in the middle of a church of believers, why would he even have to bring this stuff up? Because the thing is, when we are not rightly connected to the Most High God, then guess what? We're going to fall short sometimes. Yes, we're going to fall into the sins that God is saying, I need you to make sure you stay away from it. So right now, we're going to look at this list, and we're going to go through them, and we're going to pull them up. So the first one is adultery outside of marriage. I mean, uh, is, is any kind of sexual relation outside of the bonds of marriage. You're not, in, you're not being with your spouse. You're being with somebody else. I've done some research, and... Can anyone tell me what's the number one place 
where affairs happen. The workplace. I just, where, where affairs happen. We're talking about adultery. The workplace is the number one place where affairs happen between, you know, some two people that's not married. Why is that? You're always around the person. I heard somebody over here. You spend most of your time at, so you're spending 40, 50 hours a week with that person, all right? You go there, and, and, and your husband told you don't wear that perfume to work, but you wear that same perfume. You come there, you want to make sure your little lash is all done, all right? You don't talk to him the way you talk to your husband, all right? But the husband's on the other end. He makes sure he got his little cologne on. He's dressing right. He, he got a good attitude. Brothers and sisters, we got to be on guard because none of us are immune from that. The Bible tells us that the enemy walks around like a warring lion. He's seeking for somebody to devour. So my thing is to you is, will the flesh get a point? Or will the spirit get a point when it comes to adultery? A married person starts a secret relationship with a co-worker, engaging in physical, physical or emotional affair that undermines the marriage vows. Let's go to the next one, fornication. Anybody, what does that mean? All right, so sex outside of marriage is similar to adultery, but fornication itself, it covers everything. All right, so I mean, just everything. If you can think about it, that's what it covers. So uh, let's go on to the next one. We'll just, we'll keep on going to the next one. Let's go number three, uh, uncleanliness. Talk to me. What does uncleanliness mean? Because again, we're talking about things that uh, Paul is bringing up to the church. <clears throat> uncleanliness. Pornography, okay. Anybody else? Uncleanliness. I'm sorry? Morally or spiritually corrupted, yes. What about uh, making sure that vacuum is clean on that floor in that living room? What about making sure them dishes ain't going to be with them dishes in the sink? That's, no, that's not quite what he's talking about here. Okay, that could be one. Like my sister said, moral impurity, often related to unclean thoughts speech or actions, particular of the sexual nature. We have to be careful because this is the thing. The enemy knows how to tempt us as a people, right? If you go throughout the Hebrew lineage, there always was a time that those women or the men, they was falling short. Why? Because of, of sexual temptation. When we look at uncleanliness, I want you to think about this. A, per a person frequently consumes and share explicit immoral content on social media, all right, now I know it's going to get quiet now when I say social media. Let me name your social media. TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Oh, they, they be covering their face right now when you talk about Instagram and all. Frequently consumes or shares explicit immoral content on social media or through conversation promoting a culture of impurity. I'm going to tell you right now, brothers and sisters, man, it's everywhere you look. It's all around us. Man, thank you so much. The Lord, my shepherd, you know what I wanted. See how, let me see when you're connected to God, you ain't even had to ask. But the Lord said, I'll give you the desires of your heart. Thank you so much. So, the thing is this here. When we think about uncleanliness, you're not physically doing anything that's wrong. But the thing is with uncleanliness is, what are you putting before your eyes? What is the thing that's constantly being put in front of you? When, you know how they say that? The eyes is the windows to the soul. Now remember, the spirit is on this side. The flesh is on this side. They're both battling for what? For your soul. Some of us are so faithful when it comes to Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. And I'm going to say help us because, man, I, I, I'm guilty at times. I get on there, and the crazy thing, especially with TikTok, this algorithm thing, right? If you look at something for over two seconds, they can automatically start sending you more stuff like that. Don't matter if it's good or bad. The thing is, Satan studies you, and he knows how to get your attention. So we have to make sure, as people of God, are we going to lean to our flesh, or are we going to lean to the spirit? We have to make sure that we're on guard, and we got to watch what we put in front of our eyes. Why? Because uncleanliness is one of the things that shouldn't be found in the heart of a believer. When you think of uncleanliness also, it's constantly stuff going in your mind. 
So my question to you, what should we be thinking about? Right? What should we be putting in front of our eyes? Because, man, yeah, we spend that little, you know, we read our verse of the day, right? We read that verse of the day. How long does that take us? About maybe about a minute, right? We read our little devotional, maybe take us about two minutes. All right? That was clean. That was good. That was holy. That was righteous. We take it in. But what happens after that? How much of the rest of the day are we filling our minds with uncleanliness? The Bible says in Philippians chapter 4, Excuse me, verse 8, it says, it says now this is going to help somebody because we got to retrain our thoughts. And look, I know sometimes that thing could just be like you just want to see what's going on. You know, you just want to just scroll, but we have to be careful. Philippians 4, 8. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, it says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true. When we go to watch something or put something before our eyes, we need to be at, begin to ask ourselves these questions. Okay, this TikTok or this, this Instagram, I mean, this, this, this reel that I'm watching, even though it's funny, right? Is this thing true that I'm looking at? It says, what the, whatsoever things are honest, huh? Whatsoever things are just, are all those pranks and stuff that they're doing to people just? I, mean, I saw a prank the other day, man. He, this was, no, man, it, it, it wasn't just. And, and I kind of laughed at it. But then I'm like, man, I shouldn't, be, I shouldn't be laughing at this stuff, man. You know, the old lady fell down, and, and she didn't hurt herself, but just the way they had popped the balloon and scared her, you know, is, you see how y'all laughing? I got to pray for y'all. Y'all probably saw that one. Okay, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure. What are we putting before our eyes? Just think about it, movies, mo uh, music, uh, social media, uh, 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 everything. Is it pure, right? Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report. The other day, man, I'm looking at a guy, man, he, he, he just crying, crying on social media, and like he got I don't know how many views. His dog died. Man, my dog died. It wasn't no big thing. The dog did. But those things right there, they play on your emotion. Why? Just to grab your attention. Yes, sir. Right? Well, Mackenzie's dog died. I'm sorry, Kenzie. What? <laughs> All right. Whatsoever things of a good report. If there be any virtue, right? If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, look what the Bible says for us to do. To do what? Think on these things. Now, I want you to name one reel that you saw that fits all of Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. None. I'm going to tell you right now, social media could be a danger, yeah. The reason I say it could be a danger for us is because when we first got into it, you hear a cuss word and it would offend you. And now you could watch a reel or something or watch something and they say a cuss word, right? But it doesn't even offend you. You don't even, you don't even flinch. You just keep on watching it. What's it that, what does that say about us as a people? Huh? We, we could look at this thing and they're doing some stuff that we know sh we shouldn't be watching. They're shaking this, they're shaking that, they're touching this, they're touching that, they're doing. But guess what? <laughs> Are you offended by somebody? Well, you, you know, if somebody in your presence, they just cussing and all that stuff. You, you cool with that? <laughs> I remember I used this example one time. How many of y'all like brownies? I like brownies. We like brownies. I love brownies, man. I love brownies. But what if I made you a nice big batch of brownies, right? But I put just a little bit of dog doo-doo in them brownies. <laughs> it's still brownies. It's still delicious. You still love them. But guess what? It got just a little bit in there. And that's how we are when we sit there and we indulge in stuff that we just think, oh, man, it's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm all right. Huh? I know a lot of y'all will be repenting tonight. I ain't, going on, so I ain't going on Facebook tonight. I'll wait till tomorrow. <laughs> no, I'm just stop there. Okay. Whatsoever things are, if, if there be any praise, it says think on these things. Let's keep on going. Lasciviousness. Anybody, what is lasciviousness? What's that? I can't hear you. Envy. Envy? Okay, okay. That, 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 that's kind of a thought. Anybody else? Lasciviousness. We don't really use the word too much, you know, in our modern vernacular. I'm sorry? Overindulgence, okay, all right. So lasciviousness, excessive indulgence in sensual pleasures, being shamelessly immoral. And you know, we can look harder at, at the Galatian church here. 
Like, man, what kind of church was that? Man, them boys, them boys don't want. But the reason that thing is in the Word today is because some of us, we all go through something, and sometimes we don't want to admit it, so God uses people like myself or, or use others, man, to bring those things up so only we can just get better, all right? That's it. Some, okay, don't clap too long. We are, we are, let's, let's pass. That's good. Excessive indulgence, all right? Someone habitually attends wild parties with explicit behavior, where explicit behavior is encouraged, and they openly promote or engage in sexual promiscuity with no regard to decency. Can anybody tell me what kind of parties come to mind? <laughs> that Don Diddy is all over the place. I'm just, you cannot go without seeing something about Diddy. And, that boy in trouble, man. Hey, look, look, the, uh, the pleasures, well, he, I don't know. Anyway, we got to pray for him. We just, you know, anybody want to do prison ministry? Y'all can go see Diddy. Uh, but you know, the crazy thing about that situation is that I think it's more to the story than just all that stuff. Because Hollywood is wicked. The music industry is wicked. These people do wickedness all day long. And, and we constantly, well, you know, maybe he didn't do it or maybe... Man, the people wicked, man. They doing wickedness. So why would we be so shocked when we see a thousand bottles of lotion or bottles of whatever that was? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So the thing is that they're doing wicked. So uh, lasciviousness is not good. So if y'all on, on, you know, on, 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 the, on the list, just, you know, just repent and send. Uh, man, y'all still, y'all doing prison men? Oh, y'all doing the young, yeah. We'll get something for the older prison uh, ministry. Idolatry. Let's go next, number five. What is, the, what is idolatry? Anybody? That's right. Idol worship. Worshiping of idols or anything other than God, including placing things like wealth, power, and fame above God. Now, this is the thing. We don't go after the little stones and the little wooden things anymore. But how about, how about you know, success can be uh, an idol in your life. Your money can be an idol in your life. Things that, that anything that you put before God is going to be an idol. Why? Because you're spending more time with that thing than when you're spending more time with your creator. God said this here, man, seek first the kingdom of God, right? And then all these things, what? They're going to be added to you. But we seek all these things right here. We wonder why nothing getting added to us. We got, the, we, got, we, got it, we got it backwards. Number six, witchcraft. Uh-oh. Anybody witchcraft? Y'all know what that is? Y'all going to Miss Lily on the Broad Bridge Highway, y'all know? Got them tarot card readings and all that stuff. Let's see. The use of magical power, sorcery, or practices that, that involve supernatural forces apart from God. Y'all don't let that be amongst us. All of you that, you know, all you guys that may be into your horoscopes and all that stuff, man, leave that stuff alone. You want to need, you want to know what your future going to hold? Man, see God. He's going to reveal it to you. He got a purpose and a plan for all of us. Seek him with all your heart. I'm going to tell you this here, man. I was listening uh, to this thing about the, uh, even the horoscopes. They're saying that, man, for each horoscope, there's three demons assigned to each and every horoscope. So you think about it, three times 12 I went to public school, carried them one for, that's about 36. That's a lot of demons going on. And us as a people, man, we, you know, it's Gemini season, it's cancer season, you know. Man, y'all be careful with that, amen? amen? Hatred. Let's talk about that one. What is hatred? Anybody? That sound good to me. Intense dislike or hostility toward others often result in a division or conflict. I'm going to tell you this here, man. When you look in the Scripture and, 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 and Jesus begin to break things down, you remember he said, man, you know, thou shalt not commit adultery, but Jesus said, but I said that if a man look with lust, he committed. Man, you know, hatred is, carries the same weight as murder. Yeah. Huh? And it's crazy that, that we could hate and have such a strong dislike for somebody, but usually it's one of our own people. Yes, Another nationality can do us anything they want and it don't be no big deal. But let somebody say something wrong about us on Facebook, and man, we're ready to kill them or we're ready to shoot them. We, why is it that, that, that we built like that? I'm going to tell you right now, man, we have to be on guard. Why? Because the spirit and the flesh is at war. This is not just a little fight that we can take a day off. No, every single day we have to make sure that we are diligently seeking the Most High God, staying connected to the Holy Spirit, so that way we won't be dealing with hatred. Number eight, variance. Variance is not one that we use a lot. Anybody, variants. All right, not nobody. Okay, disputes, disagreements, 
or quarrels that lead to discord or conflict. Mm, I see why nobody wanted to talk about variance. <laughs> How many, we got any quarrelsome people in the house tonight? Huh? We got any that just like to stay starting some trouble all the time? You, sometimes you see them, you don't want to talk. Oh, Lord, you know she's going to come here with something. All right, that's not y'all, but that might be the person on the side of it. All right? Variance. You have to be careful that we're not always sowing division and discord, especially in the body. Man, God is calling for us as a people to unify and come together so that we, can, we totally can bring some change. But if we're always being this divisive, man, that shouldn't, be, that shouldn't be for us. This other big word, emulation. Anybody? Jealousy, yes. Jealousy and, or envy, particular the desire to surpass others by any means. A co-worker becomes intensive jealous over another, another one's promotion and success, going as far to undermine them at work, spreading false rumors, or trying to outdo them at any cost. Emulation. Guys, let me tell you something. You want God to promote you on the job? Ask him. That's it. You don't, you don't have to go to, the, to, the, to your employer, you know. Ask God. Talk to your God. He says, nothing will I withhold from them that walk upright. You don't have to be going around trying to, trying to, you know, hate on somebody else or put somebody else down to pick you up. That's the world's way. That's not God's way. Believers, we got we to make sure that we're not doing these things that's on this list. Um, wrath. Come on now. What a messy one is that? I mean, uh, the variance. Uh, wrath. What wrath mean? Anger. Anger, yep. Anger, anger, anger. Extreme anger or rage that is uncontrolled and leads to harmful actions or behavior. During a heated argument, a person completely loses control of their temper. Shouting, becoming physical aggressive, and hurt those around them either emotionally or physically. Now we gotta talk about that. One. Because we might say that, look, none of that stuff, that other stuff applies to me. But how many of you believers, and I'm talking about me too, Amen. in the last, let's say last couple of weeks, you flashed out. Now look, you ain't got to say, no, you ain't got to raise your hand, just keep looking straight, don't even blink your eye. Nobody never knew that you just, just say, look, if you, if you take your whole your eyes open. This is the thing. We believers, right? We men of God, we are the chosen people of the book. How do we just lose it? How do we just flash out? How is it that a person that is so connected to God, you rub them the wrong way and beep, beep, you beep, 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 Next thing you know, hallelujah, praise God. Oh, God is moving. Lord, thank you. Oh, hallelujah. And you go home and beep, beep. What is that? When that very thing that shouldn't be comes over us, that lets us know who's winning. That lets us know that the enemy himself is saying, I got another point on the scoreboard. Ha, God, you thought that was a believer. You thought that was a child of the most high God. I got him because I know how to push his buttons. I know how to push her buttons. I know how to really tick them off. And then you say, well, look, this, I just flashed out. That's it. And you can't remember what you flashed out about. You can't remember what you said because at that moment, the flesh was so strong. And remember, who's connected to the flesh? The devil, Satan himself. Yes, He's connected to the flesh. Who's connected to our spirit? The Holy Spirit, God himself. Again, you always be bound with decisions. And guess what? You have to make a decision. Who is going to win? And the thing is, if we decide that the enemy going to win, well, we letting Satan, you know, get the upper hand. Let's talk about another one, strife. No peace. Strife. Conflict, competition, or rivalry that cause division, especially in the body of Christ. Strife shouldn't be. In a church or in a family. One person causes continual disputes and arguments, fostering an atmosphere of division and bitterness. Preventing unity, pre preventing unity and peace. 
God, let that not be us. Let that not be us, guys. Let that not be us. Let's keep on going. Sedition. Anybody? Sedition? All right, sedition. Sedition is this, inciting rebellion or division, particularly in the body of Christ. Man, this, this stuff that's going on in Galatia, again, we can't judge Galatia too hard. Why? Because this is pretty much the modern-day church. But the Hebrew church, Philadelphia, this should not be named. All right? Sedition, again, a, a member of an organization, uh, again, he's just, uh, he just spreading uh, discontentment uh, and encourages others to rebel against the leadership leading to a split or a schism within the group. We don't have to, have to talk about that too much. You already know what happened here at Philadelphia. Yes, sir. Amen? 13, heresies. Heresies is this, a belief or opinion that goes against the established doctrine, especially in the body of Christ. All right? A teacher in the church begins to promoting false doctrine, ideas, that go against the core beliefs of the faith, leading some members to stray off from the truth. Again, that did not be us. You know how we just passed through all that stuff? Nah. The Bible says, man, every word that proceeded, that's what we're going to live on, every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Let's go to 14, envying. What is envying? Feeling of discontentment or resentment aroused by someone else's passions, I mean, possessions, qualities, or blessings. Envying. Feelings of discontent or resentment aroused by someone else's possession, qualities, or blessings. Envying, you have to be careful of that also. Somebody get blessed with that new car. You've been wanting it. Don't be all jealous and mad that they got the new car. Just remember, if you can see them get blessed, that God, like Brian, Minister Brian always say, man, God right around the corner, he ain't, he ain't too far. Your blessing is coming. Don't be envious of those that, that get that house that you've been wanting. Man, look, yours is coming around the corner. Don't be envious of that promotion. Yours is right there. Listen to me, man. God has a certain time for everything. And, and the thing is, if we try to operate, op, uh, you know, uh, force God's hand, we're trying to manufacture a blessing, and it always end up in, in, in some destruction. It always end up bad for us. So again, envying. Uh, we, we don't want to be envious. Murders. You know how y'all be, y'all big gangsters around it, you know? All right, murders. The unlawful killing of another person, either physically or metaphorically through hatred, right? Some of us, we ain't never killed nobody, not with a gun. We ain't never stabbed them. We even thought about it and twisting that blade in their back. The Christians, now I'm talking about the believers, not, not, not in this group over here. Well, that group over there, that group ain't saved at all. We got to pray for them over there. But, oh, no, my brother, he, he's still in that group now. I'm just, all right, let's go back to murders, all right? <laughs> beyond the physical act of killing someone, okay, beyond the physical act of killing someone may murder another's reputation. Okay, hold on, I want to make sure I read that right. Beyond the physical act of killing, someone may murder another's reputation through malicious gossip. Yes, I just wanted to share it with you so we could pray about it. You know, I, I, you know, this is something that we really need to pray about. So we start talking all the business. Lies, character assassination, yes, causing significant harm to the person's life and relationships. Don't ever think that, again, just because you didn't physically do it. Jesus said this here, man, if you hate your brother, and that's, 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 that when you go along with murder, that, that's some hate. Yes, that will cause you really to talk about somebody or, or you know, or really... Uh, uh, be like that towards, towards another believer. Now, I know this one right here on the list. I know none of y'all ain't got to deal with that, but I just got to cover it just to cover all the bases. Yes, sir. Next word is drunkenness. Right? Money in the bank, shorty, what you drink? They be like that drink. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Now, they have this this idea, I was on the phone with a lady the other day that called the church, and she was so excited to hear about, you know, us as, with our Hebrew identity, and man, she was, she was like, man, you know, the, his feet were the color of burnt brass, and, you know, his hair was like wool, and his 
His eyes was red like fire because he would drink. I said, hold up, my sister. Wait, whoa, 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 nah. Now, Jesus turned water into wine. I've never seen in the scripture that Jesus himself consumed alcoholic beverages. But the thing is, again, when we're listening to somebody else and we're not studying to show ourselves approved, we'll go around and think that this doctrine that Jesus' eyes is red simply because he's been getting drank, he's been staying long at the, at the bottle. And that's not so. Drunkenness, overindulging in, 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 in uh, uh, alcohol. How do you know when you went too far? No, I don't know about that, Brother Cole. I think when you start getting like this, <laughs> you're standing up straight, but you feel good. Uh-huh. Why well, is it just to help me sleep? Why well, is it just to help me to cope? It's just to help me my, my cataracts. <laughs> oh, no, they're not drinking for the cataract. But that, that could be on the drunken too, that, 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 that smoking weed and doing all the mother, all the mother stuff. And I, some people, they not only smoke weed, they drink weed. You know? But <laughs> when they used to drink that, they don't do it no more. Amen? This is the thing, man. We have to be careful. The Bible tells us what? Be filled with the Spirit. Right? Don't be drunk with wine. Be filled with the Spirit. What, 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 is, what do they call wine and alcoholic beverages? Spirits. So what spirit are you taking in? Are you taking in the Holy Spirit that's going to have you wild and out and doing all kind of stuff? that you wouldn't normally do? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Or you're being filled with the Holy Spirit that's, that's leading you and guiding you in the, the ways of righteousness, right? We have to be careful that drunkenness not be found amongst the believers. Amen? Let's go with reveling. Reveling, uh, wild, noisy parties or riotous behavior, especially involving the one previous, excessive drinking and immoral acts. Y'all going to Mardi Gras this year? Huh? Shouldn't be. Right? It shouldn't be. Let the good times roll. That's crazy, man. We can speak all the French, but we don't know a lick of Hebrew. And we Hebrew. We're not even French. Oh, man, I'm, I'm Creole. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm... Man, I had a situation, man, uh, this, uh, this past weekend, and I was doing... I was doing some business with, with a brother, and, uh, you know, everything went good. And he was telling me, man, I, you know, about uh, they were having a big bushery. I said, yeah, man. I said, okay. I said, man, you know, man, y'all do y'all thing. I, you know, I'm, I got the check in my hand. I don't want to badge the man. You know, he didn't already, you know. But he told me, he said, man, I hope I live to see it. So I'm like, well, man, you know, you just starting out, man. Just keep on going. You know, the event going to get bigger and bigger. He said, well, no, man, I had, he told me four heart attacks in the last three weeks. He said, man, his arteries are 100% blocked. But the thing is, they're having a bushery. Because they're not, they're not Hebrews, they're Creoles. And I'm not trying to knock anybody what, what you think. But the thing is this here, there's wisdom inside of the law. God said, man, we, we shouldn't be eating it, so maybe we need not to eat it as much. But, man, they're going out there. They look, they got the fresh backbone stew. They got the crackling going. And, I, look, I used to love that, but I'm like, bro, don't eat that, man. You're about to die already, and I need you to come back next year and do business with me. So I prayed with him, you know, to extend his life for at least 15 years because I know the more events he have, the more toilets he's going to rent. Amen? So the thing is this here, we have to understand who we are. Right? Yes, sir. So reveling shouldn't be part of our thing. All right? So, man, as we have looked at all the list of 17 different things, I want you to do a little bit of introspection. Again, I'm not trying to get you to call out anything that, you know. But if you find any kind of shortcomings from this list that applies to you or something that you've been going through or maybe something that you've been dealing with, Let's start relying and praying to God that he would uh, uh, help us in our time of weakness. Amen? Because this is the thing. If, if, we can, if he showed us this, that means that that's something that we're dealing with. Nothing happens by happenstance. It's just not like, oh, that just happened with Mr. Field just happened to be cut. Nah, it's stuff that we go through that God is trying to say, man, listen, I need y'all to get this thing right because I want to elevate you and bring you to a whole nother level. All right? 
How does recognizing these things help us turn to the Spirit for strength? When we admit that there's a problem, then guess what? We can go to and depend on God to fix it. I said, amen. The works of the flesh are self-centered, destructive behaviors that reflect life outside of God's will. Living in the flesh only leads to heartache and pain, broken relationships, guilt, and ultimately separation from God. And we don't want that. Let's look at verse 22 through 23. The Bible says this here, the fruits of the Spirit. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. When you're operating in the fruit of the Spirit, guess what? There is no law. There is not no kind of way that you're being bound. You're living life to the fullest, and guess what? There is true freedom. Let's talk about this, these words that's on this list. Now, on, on the, the bad side, you had 17. This right here, you ain't got that many. We can knock that out in no time. All right, what's the first one on the list? Love. What kind of love is he talking about here? Agape love, right. Agape love. What does agape mean? Unconditional, right? So the love that he's talking about here is not the love that you would find between a, a man and a woman, a like a, a, a Eros type of love, romantic type thing. It's not the love that you would find between each other. Like at Philadelphia, we have brotherly love. But this right here, this agape that should be a fruit of the Spirit. Now, listen, we named a whole bunch of things, but it's only one fruit. It's not the fruits of the Spirit. It's one fruit. All right? Now, this is the thing. When we look at that agape, you have to be connected to God in order to give agape. Because it's not conditional. It's not based on what you do for me. It's not based on, on, on if I like you today or, or you know, it's not based on the weather. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I like you today, but I don't like you tomorrow. It's, it's not based on that. It's unconditional. All right? Showing kindness and forgiveness to someone who has wronged you even when it's difficult. This is the way that we are supposed to act. We're supposed to be showing the fruit of the Spirit. All right, now the next one. What's the next one? Joy. All right, anybody know the Greek word for joy? Chara. Right? A deep sense of gladness and delight that comes from knowing and trusting God, regardless of the circumstances. It's not dependent on external conditions, but is rooted in our relationship with Christ, we're talking about joy. I get joy when I think about what you've done for me. I get depressed when I think about them bills that said not set me free. <laughs> joy is supposed to be a fruit that we always operate in. But why is it that sometimes we, we look and we're down and out? Why is it that we're suffering from depression? Why is it that we, 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 we always, woe is me, this is that going wrong? And, what is it? Do we understand and are we connected and are we trusting in the Most High God like we say we are? Because this is the thing, man, there's a difference between joy and happiness. Joy is eternal, right? Happiness is going to be temporary. I might say something to make you laugh and the next minute you're like, well, why, why do they keep putting Minister Phil up there? I don't know why. They, just, they need to keep that boy in the sound booth, you know? <laughs> this joy only can come from God himself. Because, man, you will have all kinds of situations that come up, and you cannot be blown with every, every different thing that, that, that you're faced with. Yeah, sometimes the bill is going to be short. Yeah, sometimes that car not going to start. Yeah, sometimes, man, you're going you to go in there and somebody going to cut in front of you. But that joy does not come from, because what's happening on external uh, circumstances. Your trust is in God. You're locked in and you're loaded. No matter what comes my way, guess what? I'm going to keep on pressing towards God. I'm going to keep on pressing to the mark of the high call. Why? Because that's who I am. He made me for this. Right? The joy of the Lord is what? Is our strength. What is joy? Maintaining a positive and hopeful attitude even during challenging times because of your trust in God's plan. If you don't trust God's plan, you're going to be crying every night. If you don't trust in what God say, man, and you can tell because we'll say, man, oh, I trust God with all my heart. Oh, God, do it. I believe in God going to do it. Then five seconds happen, he ain't did it. Oh, it's I can't believe he left me. He forsake. Nah, he said he never leave you nor forsake you. We got to stay connected, man. We got to stay connected. Next one is peace. What is peace? Inner tranquility and restfulness, knowing that God is in control. 
It also refers to harmonious relationship with others free from conflict and strife. Peace and joy are going to always go together. Because when you're fully connected and you understand the importance of the relationship with God, God surrounds you with peace. He's the prince of peace. All right? He says, I came that your joy may be full, so that joy and peace are going to go together, just like the Bible says, goodness and mercy are going to follow you. How many of y'all, last time y'all got bumped and, and hit in the back from by goodness and mercy? Sometimes goodness and mercy, they becomes, and they be hitting like, come on, man, chill out, man. No, let me stop that. This is the thing. Peace. Experiencing a calm and trust in God during times of uncertainty and being a peacemaker in a situation of conflict. Now, it's all right for us to trust God. How many peacemakers we got? Talking about I show them my peace. I show them my peace, all right, a peacemaker. I show them the peace. Half of y'all be throwing up the half of peace signs, too. And that shouldn't be named among y'all. Y'all know the half of peace sign is. <laughs> no, half of it, though, brother, call it, talk about peacemaker. But this is the thing. Let's go to the next one. Forbearance. Y'all get that later on. Forbearance. <laughs> also translated as patience. All right? Definition, the ability to endure hardship, suffering, or provocation without getting angry or wilding out and flashing out. It is long-suffering, tolerant, and willing to wait. Oh, man, we got any forbearers in here tonight? Huh? We got any patient people in here tonight? Remaining calm and patient with difficult people or circumstances instead of reacting with frustration. Yeah, we need some help with that. Because, man, I'm, I'm going to tell you, hey, look, that, that patience is, is, man, it's something. Man, I, you know, we talk about the spirit and the flesh, right? One way to bring the flesh under submission is fasting, right? And, man, I remember when I was fasting one time, my wife coming there, I just... I flashed out. I said, look, girl, I ate in 15 minutes, girl. What do you want with me? I be- <laughs> I'm lying. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. When it's time to eat, I'll be out of patience. I ain't got no patience. Like, I don't know got love. got, you know. This is the thing. Patience. <laughs> How many of y'all been fasting 15 minutes and y'all be aggravated? Like, come on, I don't lie now. All right, y'all need to try. Y'all need to try fasting some time. Patience, the Bible says, man, let patience have our perfect word. Patience does something inside of us that we don't always see on the surface, right? God is preparing you for something that further along down the road, you don't have to deal with. And he's going to need you in the right state of mind in order to take care of that thing. Let's go to kindness. Kindness, definition, compassionate and considerate behavior toward others. It involves doing good for others with no expectation in return. All right? Now let's say that kindness. You do good for people and not expect anything in return. All right? Helping a neighbor or stranger in need with a kind, uh, with a kind or generous heart, even when it's inconvenient. Let me ask you this here. When it comes to kindness, on a scale of 1 to 10, don't even ask it. Man, how, how high is your, is your kindness? 10 is you're is you super kind. 0 is you're not kind at all. All right, don't worry about it. I see some of them that took their shoes off. They was counting like this. They're not even counting on their toes. You know, kindness is something that should be part of the believer. Goodness, all right? What is goodness? Moral excellence and virtue uh, characterized by an active desire to do what is right and beneficial to others. Standing up for what is right, helping someone in trouble or being honest in all your dealings. All right? Next one, faithfulness. Faithfulness is something that we should, that, that, that should be part of, a, of, of, a, of our, the, the fruit of the Spirit that's, that's evident in our lives. Faithfulness, the definition is loyalty, uh, reliability, and trustworthiness. It reflects being faithful to God, faithful to others, and fulfilling one's responsibility. All right? Example of that is keeping a promise or commitment uh, of being dependable at work in relationships, or with your walk with God. You told God that I'm going to get up every day at 5 o'clock and I'm going to seek your face, right? But it's been two weeks since you got up. Yes, sir. You're going to bed late at night because you're staying up till 1 o'clock in the morning looking at this and that on that, and you're sending that to everybody, right? Because it'd be funny, you send it to everybody. All right, I'm not saying nobody nothing no more. If that's how y'all go heck in church, y'all nothing, okay. 
this, <laughs> this is the thing. Faithfulness. God is looking for us to be faithful. Gentleness. What is gentleness? Humility and mildness in dealing with others. It is strength under control. Showing a calm, nonviolent attitude, even in situations of provocation and power. Now, this is the thing. Meekness don't mean you're weak. Meekness just means I'm, I'm going to maintain myself, and I'm not going to just go off on you, even though I know I could. Yes, sir. Like the other day, I was putting some gas in this little lady. Now, now, I had a trail on my truck, so I parked a little while. Now, she's trying to get into the drive through at Popeye's, which they got, she could have went right in front of me. But she blowing her horn. And at that time, I, I had my sunglasses on because when my face is all... I forgot who I was. I forgot I'm a minister because sometimes people be saying, oh, man, you miss a bill? Oh, no, not this. I'm only Monday through Friday, baby. Not, not today. No. So she blowing the horn, right? And I'm like, man, woman, I'm, you going you to have to wait. I'm not moving my truck. Because this is the drive through I'm going to Popeye's, OK? So I had to maintain myself because I really wanted to act, say something that I really shouldn't say. It. Well, I mean, I didn't say it, but I wanted to say it. Because I'm like, first of all, you're Gentile, and I, you know, <laughs> you're regular. You're not special no more. <laughs> now that I know you're Gentile, you're not, you know. But the thing was, I didn't do it. Why? Because I still have to reflect Christ. Lord. I still have to maintain myself in every situation, right? So this is the thing. You have to always be ready to do what? To be gentle. Self-control. Last, I think that's the last one. Yeah, self-control. The ability to control one's desire, emotions, and actions, especially in situations or temptations or pressure. It is exercising discipline and restraint. Self-control. That can be in anything. It can become when it comes to getting that little drink. It can become, you know, uh, staying up too late. It can be, it could be, it could be you know, it could be eating. It could be anything. We, we have to be... We, we should not let anything govern us but the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen? Amen? What do the fruits of the Spirit look like in your everyday life? How do these characteristics contrast with the works of the flesh? I want you to think about these three questions. And you don't have, you don't have to share them. I just want you to just to kind of think about them. When you think about the fruits of the Spirit, just as we looked at the list of, of the works of the flesh, when we look at the fruits of the Spirit, we might not say, well, man, the, the, the works of the flesh, man, I'm, I'm not really doing none of those, or I got a few of them. But in the work of the, uh, the fruit of the Spirit, where are we in, in that list also? Because everything on that list is very, very important, and that's the very thing that exemplifies God, that brings him glory. That's the thing that, that other people see that want to make them glorify your Father that's in heaven. They see your good works. They see the way you act. They see the way you respond, and it makes them, you know, wants to, wants to uh, want to go after him. Which fruit do you feel God is growing? Oh, here. Which fruit do you feel God is trying to grow in you? Which one do we need to pray more for? This is the thing. And we, we close and we finish. 